Hi guys and welcome back to episode 2 of the Theatre Help Q&A, a free online question and answering session for young actors and aspiring creative industry folk to help keep you inspired and motivated during the coronavirus pandemic lockdown. Now, in episode 2 I've got some fresh new questions for you and some fresh new faces too. So sit back, relax, maybe take some notes and enjoy. I would have to say no. Um, I feel that it's more of a vocation than uh, than a job, and I'm at my happiest when I'm doing it. Um, so everything else kind of fits into place around that. Um, sadly, though, I didn't get to go to my best friend's wedding because of a job, um, but she was the one that said I wasn't allowed to not take it. So um, yeah, that's probably the only thing I've had to sacrifice. So before I was an actor, I I was kind of training to be a property lawyer, believe it or not, um, which was, you know, it was a huge career. I had this sort of epiphany moment where I realised that, <laughs> I guess I had a quarter life crisis and I realised that that's not what I wanted to do. Um, and I thought I could do them side by side to start with, but obviously one had to go. So I chucked the law and look at me now. <laughs> Yeah, I'd do exactly the same thing again. I think everyone does, but I think that's probably the case in any career. Um, uh, I used to work as a doctor, I don't anymore. There is always a difficulty as an actor because you're a freelance worker that you can't get things in the diary. So I've missed, you know, weddings and birthdays and funerals even um, because of work that I just haven't been able to get out of. And there is a sacrifice in terms of not knowing your future plans that far in advance and always being nervous about putting things in the diary. But those things can come with a degree of freedom that um, a nine to five doesn't give you. Well, I've moved to London from my hometown, so I don't, I, I've obviously in the first instance moved away from where I was from to follow this, uh, follow this art. Um, and then while doing a TV, you know, you can, you might be moving away, you might be uh, in a different part of the country, different part of the world, so you won't see your friends a lot. And then whilst doing a play, um, it might be hard to see friends and family because actually during rehearsals, it might be fine. You could still go in the evening and see your friends. But once the play starts, it can be uh, almost a bit lonely because you're working when everyone else is out of work. And when you're out of work, when, you know, you have your days free and everyone's in work at that time. So it can be, you can actually spend a lot of time away from family and friends. And I think, you know, it can be hard if your family or friends don't do acting either. They might find it hard to understand. They might feel like you're spending, you know, time away from them. But it is just sort of one of the sacrifices. Yes, I do. Uh, I live in London at the moment. And I'm quite lucky that my mother has moved up to London because I'm such a mommy's boy. Um, that she has followed me up. Um, but she is... Uh, very happy now where she's living but it also means that I get to see my mother all all the time which is great um, to see the rest of my family I do have to travel home um, and find the time to travel home and make that effort to go and see people um, it's quite nice when I have work in Wales because then I get to see them all the time but yeah I do get to see my family and I have managed to build up a nice group of friends in London as well so I've got a nice support network around me. Luckily for me I see a lot of my family and friends and I always try and prioritise my time to see them um, because often I, I do work abroad. I'm really lucky that I get to film in Budapest uh, for a lot of my time and uh, yeah it's it can be tough you know there could be a couple of months go by where I'm still out there which is so fun but obviously I always miss my family. It's really cool when you work on some of these jobs abroad you end up making family out of the friends and the colleagues that you have because you're all out in a different place and as scary as it can be it's really really exciting and I feel like everybody comes together on jobs like that because you know everybody misses the people they're usually around. I moved down to London for drama school so I don't get to see my family and friends as often as I'd like uh, unless they're down here in London but I've been very fortunate to work all over the world and up in Scotland. So when I'm working with the National Theatre Scotland or other theatres, I um, I get to stay with my mum and dad and see all my brothers and friends up there. Interesting. It really depends on the character or the role. 
the basic thing that I do is, first of all, I try and learn all my lines before. If I can learn them by day one, I try and learn them. And then if I recognize something in the character, in, in people that I know in real life or people that I've seen in other things, I like latch on to those characters that I know in real life and I studied them hard. And, um, and I bring those ideas um, into the rehearsal room, having already as much as possible know the lines. And then it's a conversation between me and the director, what's good and what's not. So it really depends on the project, on the character. Uh, sometimes I'll do months of research, sometimes it'll be a lot more free. I think sometimes it's a physical thing. I've played characters which are in different centuries and they're much more upper class characters. So I've had to work on my posture. Um, sometimes it's just research based. Uh, one thing I always make sure I do is I'll read the script multiple times. So I'll read it once just for fun, see what I like, see what I don't understand. Then I'll read it again and kind of look at the themes in the play, maybe some of the uh, messages or some of the questions that it's asking. And then I'll read it again and have a look just specifically at my character. And first I'll start looking at the facts. So what is said about my character, that's a fact. Maybe their age, things they like. And then as rehearsals go on, I'll kind of read it a bit more and, and make judgments from for myself. I like to listen to music a lot. Music's really important. I quite like to pick a band that I think my character would be if they were a band, if that makes sense. Because I think that um, it can give you a rhythm that you can keep in your body, which can, you know, you have like a little extra heartbeat in you. Um, I also like to think about what stuff my character might keep in their pockets because it's nice to have little secrets that only you know that no one else knows and art's really important too like I like to get lots of stuff from all different genres and areas and if there's a particular artist that I think my character is has similarities to or themes it's good to like look at the pictures and let them stimulate me and you know bring something out hopefully. Probably the most important thing that I focus on when I'm preparing for a role is what is my character thinking and feeling uh, throughout the play and once I know that I can then really focus on learning my lines um, and uh, you know really getting the staging stuck down because if I don't understand what I'm thinking or what I'm feeling or even what I'm saying um, then all of that other stuff is going to go out of the window um, once you really know um, what is going on inside here and inside here in terms of your character uh, you'll find that that will influence so much of everything else of, of what you're doing for me it's different every single time some people do exactly the same thing um for me it always starts with the script i think and then you work out a bit like a dot to dot you work out the journey of psychology how that works in a parallel to what the character is actually saying you know why someone's saying it and uh, what's leading them through their journey um, in that way. So I'd probably say it starts with the script and then it gets fleshed out through constant mistake making. So I'll go down into the basement and I'll throw voices around and some of them will stick, some of them won't. You can feel like a bit of a shit when you're doing that. But you never, it's very rare that you're just going to stand up and you've got the idea and it's crystal clear and you've you haven't had to blow any of I can't blow any out of the exhaust really. Getting all of your mistakes out of the way and finally tuning an idea that hopefully comes through to you through just playing on your own. I'd say that I probably start um, looking at the script and I spend a lot of time kind of um, thinking about it and um, life uh, aligns with um, the work that you're doing. So um, you start to notice more and more things link up with um, the work that you're doing, maybe. Um, but just thinking and um, trying to be the character, whatever that means. <laughs> I'll do a vocal warm up, which is standard, um, especially for theatre. Um, but I just like to clean my teeth. There's nothing uh, uh, <laughs> deep <laughs> about my ritual before a, a performance. But if I haven't cleaned my teeth, then I'm in trouble. Um, but yeah, to be honest, I do like to play music and just calm down. Or if it's a part that needs, you know, I need to go on stage straight away with some energy, is to get a bit of a soundtrack going that gets me in the frame of mind and then, um, yeah, and then clean my teeth. What do I do? I do a 40 minute physical warm up. Um, get into my costume, my character's shoes, 
feel try to get connected to the ground, feel connected to the space and uh, vocal warm up, warm up my tongue and my jaw. Um, and then I remind myself it's not about me. It's about the actors that I'm on stage with and it's about the audience, making sure the story is really clear to them because it just gets you out of your head. Before doing a theatre show, it's good to warm up, uh, get physically ready, uh, get vocally ready. So do a physical warm up, do a little bit of breath warm up there, do a bit of the voice. Um, and I think as well, you know, it helps you get ready to perform in front of a lot of people, but also as well, I think it's good to focus. You're about to put yourself in front of a lot of people and you have to do, tell a story from the start to the beginning, no matter how big your part is in, with that, in that play. It's all about what makes you comfortable. So yeah, I do have, have a few rituals. I like to do a bit of yoga, a bit of stretching, and then do like a vocal warm up as well. Some actors don't like to do that. Some actors like to have a coffee and, and get going. <laughs> So that's the end of episode two. Thanks for watching. And again, a massive thank you to the students at Swanmore College for your wonderful questions. And a huge thank you to my friends and peers for help making this video possible. Now, if you've got any comments, questions or queries, please don't forget to pop them in the boxes below. I should have episode three ready for you shortly. So stay tuned. Until then, stay inside, stay safe. And most importantly, don't forget to wash those hands. Big love.